Hello everyone, this is the Crimson Cure, welcoming you to the Crimson Tower, a place where we keep a feminine foot on the neck of the gynocracy, feminism, and black male misandry. So go ahead, pull up a chair, stay a while, and listen. Hey, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. We're going to go ahead and get right on into the topic, but first, a word from our sponsor. This is A-Game, fast-acting, long-lasting, with no side effects. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. Uh, I am, of course, your host, the Crimson Cure. And as usual, we're just gonna jump right into the topic. So today we are talking about Saweetie and Quavo's breakup. Um, it's all the buzz right now in over social media in terms of celeb gossip and news. And usually this wouldn't be newsworthy. You know, celebrity couples get together, break up fairly often, sometimes with little fanfare, sometimes with a lot of drama behind it. But in this particular case, I want to talk about a couple of things uh, specifically concerning this. But the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to, hopefully you can see this, I'm going to see if I can share the screen and read an article to you about it. And I'm going to point out a few things after reading this article and then we're going to talk about that okay so here's the article this is from yahoo news um this was posted march the 19th of 2021 and i'm just going to jump right into this one it says sweetie confirms quavo breakup on twitter he responds I emotionally checked out a long time ago and have walked away with a deep sense of peace and freedom. Excited for this new chapter of Elevation, wrote Sweetie. Sweetie has taken to Twitter to announce her breakup from Migos rapper Quavo. Rumors have been swirling that the lovebirds called it quits, but, but the My Type rapper took to Twitter on Friday to make the announcement official. I'm single. I've endured too much betrayal and hurt behind the scenes for a false narrative to be circulating that degrades my character. Presents don't band-aid scars and the love isn't real when the intimacy is given to other women. Sweetie tweeted, and this is her tweet. Then she follows up with, I emotionally checked out a long time ago and have walked away with a deep sense of peace and freedom, excited for this new chapter of Elevation. A few hours later, Quavo, whose real name is Quavius Kiat, Kiate Marshall, is that how you said it? Okay, anyway, commented on the split via his Twitter account, but like his ex without directly re referencing her by name. I know you want to make this into a show, so I'll play my part just this one time, he posted. I don't normally put my business out there, especially my personal life. I feel the need to address this so there are no false narratives. He continued, I had love for you and disappointed you did all that. You are not the woman I thought you were. I wish you nothing but the best. He ended the post with a praying hands emoji. Sweetie apparently following along with the Twitter responses hopped back on her account to respond. Take care. That was a response. Fans offered Sweetie, who's 27, born Diamante Kiava Valentine Harkia. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to comment on the names. I'm not their support long as you're happy baby stay on the path of elevation read one tweet as recently reported by the Grio fans suspected there was trouble in paradise the rappers have unfollowed each other on social media apparently the self-proclaimed icy princess hit unfollow first then the migos rapper did as well uh the california native further sparked breakup rumors after a video of her appearing on an episode of revolts new series respectfully justin in which her ex justin combs i'm assuming that's Diddy's son, serves as a co-host alongside Justin LaBoy. She told the host that she doesn't like liars, that a man, quote, broke her heart, and that, quote, lying is the last straw in a relationship. 
she continued, those are the things that really matter, the things that have no price on them. The Bentley is cool, but I'm really into intimacy and how you treat me with my emotional feels. But you took the Bentley. You didn't deny the Bentley, but okay. The couple has been open about their relationship on social media during public appearances and in various interviews. The Migos group member even revealed the pickup line used to share his interest in Sweetie. Quavo sent the DM of a snowflake emoji to mainstream hip hop residents, Icy Girl. She responded with a food emoji in reference to the Migos song, Stir Fry, which was popular at the time. According to the report, when Quavo responded with, you so icy, I'm a glacier boy, she responded, what's happening then? And the two began dating. The couple initially began dating in 2018. In another part of the video, the rapper answers a question about having a one night stand and she responds with, I've always been in a relationship faithful cancer ish okay so two things i want to address the first thing that i'm going to address is this speaks to what i've been speaking about all week on my live stream shows um which is why they won't commit to you and you can actually check out that live stream right here. And I gave three reasons and those three reasons are outlined in this very awesome uh, this very awesome diagram here. As you can see, I want you all to focus on the first three, the personal market value, the, friend, the belonging market value and the friendship market value those three are the top three things that determine whether or not a man will marry you okay and sexual market value does play a part i'm not going to say that it does not but it doesn't play as large of a part as the first three and as we can see all four of them culminate into a woman's marriage market value now why am i saying that because if you've been dating since 2018, 19, 20, 21, that's almost three years or a little, a little over two, almost three. Marriage should have been on the table. Sweetie is 27. She's going to be 30 soon. Marriage should be on the table. She should not be dating aimlessly. No woman, especially in her early years, early 20s and things like that should be dating aimlessly and if you were dating without aim when i say dating aimlessly i mean dating without marriage being the intended result of being with this person you just dating just to say you got a man for the time being and there's no necessarily not any destination to this relationship because ladies this is the thing when you go into a relationship without a plan then there will not be any plan made a wise man once told me what gets measured gets done and measurements in my eyes is a part of plan making and intent being made right so if you get into a relationship with a man that doesn't express any particular intent either way he just likes you and kind of wants to be around you this is not a relationship that's necessarily going to uh end up in a marriage it's not likely because that wasn't the plan nor was it the intent when he got with you he didn't get with you you didn't get with him and make any plan you just got with each other and like the quote-unquote vibe and you like the sex and you like and that doesn't create a foundation for a relationship that creates a foundation for hookups and situationships and you know being with somebody for four months and then splitting up and it's not that big of a deal and then two, two weeks later you got another boyfriend you be with him for three or four or five months maybe, maybe six months and it's you know that you're going in and out of these situationships with no plan no type of you know nobody's got any definite intent one way or another you know it just kind of forms up and then it just kind of goes away and you know and all of these sorts of things but if you've been dating since 2018 and it is now 2021 and marriage wasn't on the table there was no proposal there was the no, you're doing stuff wrong sis you hustling backwards because what was she 24 25 
when she got with him. That's old enough not to date without intent. That is old enough. When you're 24, 25, you should not be getting into any relationship with any man without any intention that this is going to be a marriage. We're working towards a commitment in this relationship. I'm not just going to be kicking it with you, quote unquote. Well, I kicked it in high school. I'm not kicking it at 25. I'm not kicking it at 27. I'm not kicking it close to 30. We're not kicking it. Like I said, kicking it, you know, I kicked it with you to the senior prom. You know what I mean? You know, we were 16, 17. I, I kicked it then. I'm not kicking it as a grown woman. You're going to have to come to me with some type of intention. Now, if the intention is just to be sex partners for a little bit and I'm down with that, then we can do that. But if you're going to come with me and actually get my time and actually get my attention and you call yourself don't want me to be with nobody else or talk to nobody else, or then you talking about being in a relationship, then we need to iron that out. Ladies, do not be afraid to iron that out. Because a man that wants something is not afraid to tell you what he what he wants. An F-19 that doesn't want anything, sighs and, 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 you know, soft shoes around those questions. And I'm not calling Quavo an F-19. The only reason I'm saying this is because we have to understand the nature. Saweetie was too old to get into a three-year, close to three-year relationship with a man that didn't and it didn't end up in marriage and doesn't even seem like it was going towards marriage. And I'm going to tell you why he didn't marry her. Bentley's Birkins bag, Birkin bags and all. Now that's a lot of money. I don't care if you are wealthy. Bentleys are not cheap. This is not no $30,000 car. Okay. You can easily spend a quarter meal on a Bentley. Easy. It's real simple. All you got to do is go to the dealership. And you and you can walk off and have spent a quarter meal on a Bentley. All right? Ain't no use in going in there asking how much they cost. Because if you got to ask how much they cost, you can't afford it. Just go in there and pick the one you want. So it's not a small amount of money. Even for somebody who's wealthy, that's not cheap. Those are not cheap gifts. Those are very expensive. I'm assuming he doesn't want it back. So she gets to keep walk off from the relationship with that. And the Birkin bags or whatever else he got, her jewelry, whatever, shoes, clothes, whatever the case may be. So why am I saying this? But he spent all that money and time and spent years with her, time with her, money with her, energy on her, sex on her, didn't marry her. Why not? I'm going to read the part of the article that tells you why he didn't do it. I'm going to tell you why he didn't commit. I know why he didn't commit. Because he said in his tweet, and I quote, I had love for you. I had love for you. I told you that they will love you and not marry you. I had love for you and disappointed you did all that. Whatever he's referring to. I don't know what he's referring to. I guess something that happened personally between them. You are not the woman I thought you were. I'll repeat that. You are not the woman I thought you were. He had a problem with her personal market value. He didn't quite, I'm willing to bet he didn't have too much of a problem with her belonging market value or her friendship market value because she's popular and rolling in the same circles. He knows who her friends are and you know what I'm saying and what's the word on her. He knows all of that. What he didn't know was who she was behind closed doors. So just in that statement alone, he had an issue with Saweetie's personal market value. That's why he didn't marry her. He give her Bentley, he give her Birkin bag, he give her Lobertons, he give her jewelry, he give her, he give her whatever. 
but he couldn't give her a commitment. Because whatever time they spent, whatever happened between the two of them behind closed doors and when the cameras are off, he couldn't get around her personal market value. Now she hinted at infidelity and he hurt her and he lied to her. I'm not really putting a whole lot of stock into that because she's too old to frivolously break up with men, which leads me to the second thing that I wanted to touch on with this topic. Why are the men never enough? No matter how wealthy he is, no matter how he treats you, no matter how what he does or what he says or how he behaves with you, why are these men never enough, ladies? I, the question is for you. You run around here and you constantly beg for high value men, high quality men, rich men, men that make six figures, men that make seven figures, men that, you know, and you want these men to be perfect. Meanwhile, you can come to the relationship haphazardly and expect him to accept you flaws and all. There even been songs about it. I think Beyonce did a song about it and a couple other people, a couple other women, flaws and all. I want you to accept me the way that I am and as I am and all of this type of stuff. You don't ever feel like you need to improve or stop doing something or change what you're doing or change how you approach things or, or, you know, get rid of some of these dysfunctions or flaws or, you know, whatever kind of traits that aren't working in the relationship. You never think that I need to get rid of these things. You can come to the relationship imperfect. He's got to be perfect or else you can't take it, quote unquote, and you've got to walk away. She's probably never going to be married. Or if she does, it'll be to a man she really does not want, but that, but a man that accepts her without her changing anything. That will actually accept her the way that she is. Ladies, we have to start being real. We actually don't want men to accept us without making a standard for us, without making requirements to be in a relationship with him. We don't, we actually don't like that. On the one hand, yeah, you know, we like the freedom of quote unquote not being restricted. But on the other hand, we don't respect him when he doesn't have these boundaries and enforce them. Okay, you can't be my woman if you're going to X, Y, Z. It's not going to work. I don't, because I don't marry, date, seriously commit to women who do X, Y, Z. So if you're involved in that, then you can't be my woman. Maybe you can be another man's woman, but you can't be my woman. And if we want him and value him enough, we will conform. If we can. And if we can't, we'll be sorry. But that's my question as I close this video out to the ladies. When are the men enough? What are you willing to accept in terms of flaws from him and still maintain the relationship? Because we can't say, oh, he can't lie to me. Because there's a difference between a man telling you a lie and being a liar. Because let's be real, we lie to them. We lie to them. I have lied. Am I a liar? No. Because I don't make that a habit. Just lying. Lying to my husband. Every time he asks me something, he can't believe a word I say. Because I'm always lying. No. It's a difference. Everybody tells lies at some point. Even if you don't intend any harm with the lie. You're probably going to tell some or twist the truth or bend the truth somehow. You're going to do that at some point in some situation. Everybody does. And as women, we're constantly in a state of manipulation. Constantly. It's our nature. Right? Even if we tell what, what we call white lies. Your husband comes in and asks you, 
you know, do you like his new shoes? I don't like his new shoes. He likes his new shoes very much. So I'm going to say, yeah, baby, those look good on you. I don't like those shoes. I'm not going to sit there and tell him, I don't like those shoes. Those are ugly. You see what I'm saying? So she, you know, she was like, oh, well, he lied or, or I don't like lying or, you know, the intimacy given to other women. Stop. Stop it. Knock it off. Ladies, a bunch of y'all need to knock it off. You want these men, you want them to have this, this, that, and the third. And then you start getting super picky. Super picky about, well, what's this little thing? What's this little flaw? He's got to be perfect. No, he does not. You're not perfect. No one is. So you're either going to make the relationship work or not. There is a such thing as deal breakers, but everything is not a deal breaker. Everything can't be a deal breaker. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. But before I do, everyone sound off. What do you think about this? Why aren't the men ever enough? The lady, ladies, this question is for you. Why aren't the men enough? No matter what level of status they reach or what they do or who they are, why are they never enough to stick with? Okay. And with that, I am going to wrap this up. I want to thank everyone for coming through, for liking, for sharing, and subscribing to the channel if you are new to the channel. And with that, I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye-bye, Crimsonites. Hey, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production and I'll catch you guys on the next one.